Coming up in today's video, I take you through how I paint an Australian vehicle in Oz Camo. This tutorial will focus mainly on how to achieve a weathered Ozcam look and how to dirty up your 15mm NATO vehicles. Ensure you watch through until the end of the video as I'll be running two small giveaways and I'll also be showing you a sneak peek of what Team Yankee tutorial is coming next. So I'm finally taking the dive into painting some Team Yankee miniatures. So for those who are unfamiliar with Team Yankee, it's a war game made from Battlefront that focuses around the Cold War and sort of modern era of fighting. So I'll be painting up some Australian M1 Abrams today and an LAV. These were kindly sent to me by the great team over at Battlefront Miniatures and more specifically Ryan. They sent me out a couple of sprues for the Australians and I've also got a little sprue to show you in a future video. Um, but that's, you can see that at the end of this video. So these are from the NATO Forces Amendment or the new release of the NATO Forces which includes some new models uh, actually quite a lot and I had a look at the book as well and it is fantastic I'm really torn whether I should get started on the Team Yankee Force but I've got so much to paint already um, but these are the sprues that you get so Battlefront always produce some fantastic vehicle sprues in my opinion um, some of the best out there in 15 millimeter Normally they include a lot of variety, um, so if we look at the Australian LAV, you can see that there's a few different variants that you can make, as well as the M1 Abrams. Now if you want to go into the historical or the detailed side of what the vehicles do and how they operate, etc, etc, go check out Fog of War. He's the lead on this from the content creator point of view, so he'll have a lot more information on this. I'm just here to paint these um, and just give you a really quick look at what the sprue looks like. So it's a fantastic sprue, really good kit um, and anything that's Australian is always pretty cool uh, and obviously rather um, influenced by either the Americans or the British. So this kit is going to be a great little thing to paint up. But anyway, enough of all that, let's go ahead and paint it. So to start off with, we want to give it a base coat. So Picking Australian colours is quite tricky, so I've decided to go with Flat Earth. And to sort of tone that down, I'm using Flat Flesh. The reason I want to tone this down is because Australian vehicles are dirty. Australia isn't a green country as what you know the most cities that you go to would appear to be like. Uh, we've got a lot of red dirt uh, and a lot of dust, especially when we go in the outback. So we really want to weather these vehicles. So I'm going to really reduce the colors here. So this flat earth and flat flesh combo is going to work nicely. I put it at a two to one ratio and I'm using my hider and stand back two in one Evo. And it's the 0 0.20 millimeter needle and nozzle for this. And I'm priming the vehicle into me at surface primer light gray. Now I set my PSI at 20 PSI for this, for my base coat. And once I start doing the camo, I'll then reduce that to 15 psi or 10 between the two. Um, and yeah, just making sure that you're airbrushing nicely. You're not paying too much attention to one particular area because that's when you start getting paint run away. You just slowly start coating it on. Now here comes the fun part, the OzCam. And to get the OzCam pattern, we're going to be using the BlueTac method. So just rolling up bits of BlueTac into a rough pattern as shown in the picture. Then we want to airbrush the green of the OzCam. So to get the green, I'm using NATO green. Now, as I said, we're going to really weather this and give this a really faded paint look. So to do that, I'm using flat flesh. Now the ratios are really up to you. Obviously the more flat flesh you use, the brighter and more faded the color is going to be. Um, so bear that in mind. I go to about a two to one ratio. I then add in some thinners and I give it a really good stir on a palette. It's a really good practice as well. Don't just add it all in the airbrush and hope it all mixes nicely. Just do it on a palette. It will save yourself a whole heap of effort. And then as I said, NATO green and flat flesh at a two to one ratio. And then 
here we go the pattern should hopefully look something like this now i'm watching this and commenting so i know that it doesn't look exactly like that but you know what at 15 millimeter you don't really care as long as it has some sort of uh, oscam look to it you're winning now we want to focus on the black so to get the oscam part of the black going we want to first do the rest of the blue tacking making sure that the blue tack's curved it's not got a point um, just like the Oscam is it's all very curved then for the black we're using NATO black so if you wanted to do this you could just use flat earth NATO green and NATO black um, but obviously like I said I want to really fade these paints so I'm using the flat flesh combination again And then there we go, that's NATO black and flat flesh combined at a two to one ratio. And it comes out as like a more of a German gray or even a bit lighter than a German gray. That's perfect, the Australian sun is hot, taking from somebody that knows. Uh, I've been in the outback too, so I can only imagine how quickly it would fade these paints. So just bear that one in mind when you're painting Australian vehicles. They are very, very dirty and fady if that's a word, fady. <laughs> and then the grand reveal, so get the blue tack and pull it off. Try not to get really adhesive blue tack or ones that stick really nicely like this one because it actually ended up ripping a bit of the model off, uh, but the paint didn't remove. And then something like that um, would be what you're hoping for. Uh, a little bit of cleanup, but that's okay. So for the road, or for the wheels, or the road wheels for the um, LAV, you want to paint them in German grey. Just take your time here. It's very, very easy to go astray and make a few mistakes. If you do make a few mistakes, we're using Vallejo, which is a water-based paint. So just clean off the excess paint from your brush, dip it in some water, and remove the old paint. Just make sure you're doing it rather quickly before the paint dries. And then for the tank tracks, my method remains exactly the same. I just paint them in black using a finer brush for the bits that are a bit more tricky to get to. So as you can see there between the different wheels, making sure I'm not hitting the body of the tank as well. I can then flip it upside down, get a thicker brush and paint the bits of the track that aren't gonna be affected by detail or anything like that now we want to give our vehicle a wash so to wash this vehicle i'm using meek enamels so make sure that you're giving your vehicle a good gloss coat prior i then add a drop of odorless thinners in my palette and then i follow that up with about four or five drops worth of the black wash making sure to mix it nicely otherwise the thinner will gradually work its way to the top of the surface and the wash will go to the bottom and then you'll just start and not putting in a very very diluted black wash so just keep mixing that wash in your palette from time to time to make sure that that wash remains nice and dark and you can see that i'm using an older brush with a finer tip i mean the tip's not fantastic you would only be painting models with it uh, but for a wash it works really nicely and i'm doing a form of a pin wash i like to do pin washes just to keep the cleanup to a minimum some people will coat the vehicle in a black wash and then use a rag and a, a thicker brush etc a bit of kitchen towel to clean it up i don't like that method i prefer a pin wash just to keep it nice and tidy and then here we go i'm just giving the top of the turret a go and just so you know that i actually am doing the um, lav here is it being washed and the turret as well Now to tidy up, it's as simple as leaving it for 15 minutes, getting a cotton bud and just going for gold. If the wash is being a bit reluctant and doesn't want to come off where it's spilled out or pulled, put a bit of thinners on your cotton bud, wipe the majority of it off with a bit of kitchen towel and then go over it. That way you're not going to remove the bits in the recesses in the grooves, but it will remove the rest of it on the surface that you want it gone from. As you can see here, so I'm tidying up all the vehicle here.
And there we go. Now, to weather this, I'm giving it a dry brush of stone grey. Now, I don't have a bigger dry brush, which is something that I definitely need to require. So you could save yourself a whole load of time by getting a bigger dry brush for your vehicle. But stone grey works nicely. I won't be showing you how I paint all the details, like lights, the storage I had, windows, etc. This is all covered in other videos of mine, so if you want to see those, please do go and check them out. They're in the 15 mil playlist. Now, as you can see, this vehicle is heavily weathered. There's lots of streaks, etc. So we want to use our oils for this. So I'm using Abtai Long 502 oils, and I'm going with a flat earth color or an orangey uh, flat earth color, <laughs> black, and then more of a like a stone gray color. So that flat earth will act as like the red dirt and then the stone grey is obviously dried up mud uh, and bits of dust etc. And then the black will be for just the odd little streak. So just adding dots on the top of the surface here, just very small dots. You can add them a bit further down as well if you want to. And then I'm getting my odorless thinner on a bit of brush. I'm using a very fine brush here just because I want as much accuracy as possible. And then I'm just slowly working it down. Now, you're looking at this and thinking it's probably a bit too weathered. That's fine. Just get a bit more of that thinner on your brush and keep working it. These oils work really great like that. And you can see it's slowly, slowly starting to come together. And it's really going to look the part. Trying to keep those streaks going down opposed to across the sides just so it shows you where like the rain would be or where the dust would be coming down the down the vehicle opposed to along the side of it. So you should get something like that. I think that's weathered enough for this. Um, I think it looks pretty cool. Now for the surface where like the rain wouldn't be running down it, it's a flat surface, you've got to blend it in. So to start off with you add your dots and just do small little dots here. You can keep adding more if you feel like you haven't done enough and then you start in like a circular motion you can use a much better brush for this uh, just slowly start working it in and you'll see that the paint starts to fade slightly um, but you want to really keep working it so don't just leave it with swirls of paint on there or oil just slowly start working it and it will leave a very fine layer of that those oils that you've used and it will give it a really faded sort of look to it now we want to weather the tracks so i've given the tracks a wash of umbar wash and then following that i will then go ahead and give them a dry brush of flat brown so the dry brush of flat brown really gives it a really worn track look to me it really makes them look rather rusty as well but it's up to you whether you want to go ahead and do something similar to that. I will then finish off the vehicle's weathering by using the Tamiya Weathering Master set B uh, and I'll be using the different dust colors that are on there and you can go as heavy or as light as you want here. This will just complement the streaks nicely and that will fine finish it off making it look really nice and dirty. Just the look that it I was going for. And then here we go. Here are the two finished vehicles. So we've got the LAV and the M1 Abrams. I hope you guys found this video useful. I really actually enjoyed painting these more than I thought I would actually. Uh, and not because of them being Battlefront models. I love Battlefront miniatures. But just the fact that it's a Cold War or modern sort of vehicle, it really doesn't appeal to me, or I didn't think it would, but actually painting these turn out to be really fun. Now, at the start of the video, I mentioned that I will be doing a giveaway. Now, there's two parts to this giveaway. The first part being the excess sprues themselves. If you would like to win the excess sprues, all you have to do is obviously view the video and get to this point. Leave a comment below and ensure you subscribe to the channel. 
The second part of the giveaway is the actual painted figures themselves. Now this is going to be a Patreon exclusive giveaway for the painted figures. So if you would like to win those figures, you'll have to sign up to Patreon. There's three tiers that you can pick from and it's more of a thank you to those that have been putting money back into the channel because it really does help the channel um, with paints, etc. This giveaway is also being run with the consent of Battlefront Miniatures, which have been fantastic. And again, I would really like to extend my thank you to Ryan for sending me these sample figures. I really did have a great time painting these. Other than that, guys, I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch this. If you're new here, please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. And other than that, I will catch you at the next one. Oh, and stay tuned for a quick preview as to what will be painted next week.